Hello everybody, I've got another review for you here today. I appreciate it's been quite a while since I've uploaded uh, my last review, good few months. Been quite busy with work and haven't really had any interesting guns to show you, but uh, I got this a few months ago and I thought it would be something that you would all like to have a look at. It doesn't look too interesting from the outside, but uh, it's just, this is actually a kind of a special edition gun that uh, I've only been able to find one shop really sell online. As you can see, it's a WE M84 Cheetah, or as they like to call it, a uh, Mini 92, which I don't think is a really a great name for it. A lot of retailers are actually selling this under the false information that it would take Beretta 92 magazines, which is totally false, uh, as anyone that knows anything about the Beretta 84 will tell you. Rather than just being a chopped down Beretta 92, it is a scaled down uh, gun of different design. Anyway, like I said, this is actually a special gun that WGC shops sell. They're a good retailer, based in Hong Kong, of course. Um, in addition to the standard WE um, gun, it comes with wooden grips. It has engraved markings, which are very nice. And I'll, of course, show you. It does come with a bit of a hefty price tag for a WE pistol. Uh, they label them as a Taiwan custom. I'll quickly show you here on my laptop. Here are the two regular WEs. M84, silver and black, around $100 for those two. Here are the WE Taiwan Customs. And as you can see, I paid 170 oh no, silver one, so $184 for that. Interestingly, they've also got steel slides for these now, so if you want to do a proper expensive M84 pistol build, uh, you can do that now. Anyway, onto the box. Uh, nothing indicating um, outwards that it is a trademarked special pistol or anything just looks like your normal we uh, it's fairly nice it's not as nice as the one that comes with the tokarev that has that kind of military box look green box but uh, it does its job i suppose all right inside you get absolutely nothing except the pistol as you would I suppose expect to get a lot of guns nowadays don't seem to really come with manuals, you just download them online. And um, I suppose that a lot of the stuff that you'd normally get, uh, like with a TM, all the paperwork and the BB unjammer and all that, you, do, you don't really need. This just comes with the gun itself. As you can immediately notice, I have added um, the WE threaded barrel adapter, which is about $5 on the same site. Because like most WEs, it does include that threaded outer barrel. I appreciate the lighting, it's going to be pretty bad. I, one of the main reasons I haven't been making very many videos is I can very, very rarely get a decent picture. And I don't, I don't want to put out some you know bad, low-quality uh, reviews out there in terms of graphics. I know that mine aren't edited or anything, I just upload these raw, but um, I still want them to look decent, try and get the look of the pistol across. So as you can see, it's a very attractive little gun. We've got full trademarks. Uh, you don't get very many WEs that have full engraved trademarks like this. I'm not, I assume they're actually laser cut, but a lot of laser cut trademarks, you end up with a white kind of feathery look to them, but these look very much engraved. They're very, um, they're very bold, very clear and crisp. I think they're excellent looking and they match well with the markings that are already on the gun. For example, on the frame here, those are original markings that come on the WE, and those above on the slide are different. Great looking pistol, I'll give you a few closer looks. As you might be able to tell, there's actually a distinct colour difference between the slide and the frame, which I quite like, because it indicates that it is a different material. I'm pretty sure that in the case of this replica, it will of course be the same uh, cheapish, you know, cast metal. But there is actually a difference in the texture and the um, colour, which again indicates that the slide is steel and the frame will be, I guess, an alloy or something. I'm not sure exactly what the real one would be made out of. As you can see, this is the Inox version. Uh, they just call it silver on the website, but the Beretta, um, the Beretta term is Inox for stainless steel. Have a look at those trademarks. Like I said, very deep and crisp, really good looking, and all correct except one very annoying one, 
which is um, a, a WE original trademark, which I don't know how they got wrong. If you have a look on the barrel here, calibre 9mm shot, which is of course 380 auto, but they wrote 360 auto. I don't know how they got that wrong, but there you go. <laughs> 360 auto, they invented their own cartridge. This does come with real wood grips, which um, look to be identical copies of ones that used to come with the um, Warshan metal model gun. I don't know if anyone out there is familiar with the model guns, but um, the Beretta 84 plug fire cap guns, model guns, used to come with these. You can still buy them separately, so I'm assuming that um, whoever it actually is who put this gun together and added the trademarks simply bought a whole load of model gun grips and maybe modified them slightly to fit. And they do fit quite well. They're a little bit chunky, as you can see by the profile. They could have been contoured a little bit more. But overall, um, they're very they're a very good fit for the gun. A lot of these um, aftermarket wood grips leave big gaps, which is quite unattractive, but this fits them well. And they add a really nice looking um, Beretta trademark right there. So overall, this is a definite upgrade from the black plastic grips with the WE logos on. I find those very unattractive, but um, overall, really good looking little uh, compact gun here. So being a WE, it is of course of all metal construction. It's nothing fancy. I'm sure someone's going to comment and say, is it steel? I seem to get that on almost every video. No, it's not steel. It's nothing fancy. It's not machined, um, not CNC'd. It is the, it's the usual WE cast metal. But the great thing that we WE has been putting on their newer guns as you can hopefully see, is there's actually a grain to it, as if it's been milled. You can actually see those machining marks that they've somehow put on there, and that extends to the outer barrel, which looks like it's been turned, forged, and then turned on a lathe. It looks excellent, really. There's a kind of detail that, even on a really expensive WA uh, Western Arms plastic gun or something, you know, something very high-end, you wouldn't see. But on this, which is um, by most people's uh, for it would be kind of a low-end gun, a WE. The detailing and the finish is excellent. Um, it's what I assume the finish is. A couple of little bits have gone a bit coppery inside where it's been rubbing, so I assume that it's got a copper coat on the metal and then a nickel coat or something very similar on top. So it's not just painted on, and it's not just polished. It's a, it is actually plated and uh, it gives a nice durable, silky feeling finish. I, I'm very impressed actually. And um, like I said earlier, it's, it is quite expensive for a WE, but really I think the quality and the finish and the look that you get for that, you know, $180, so what's that, £110, £120 or something, I, I think it's well worth it. Very happy with this gun. Right, so first impressions when I picked it up, other than the excellent finish and detailing, is it's pretty well put together. As you can hear, there, there's virtually no rattle in it. Add the magazine and you get a little bit of course, but for a full metal gun, very tight build quality. And that extends to when you rack the slide, everything is very tight. It's actually got a really tough recoil spring in, to the point where if you go to rack it quickly, uh, you can actually kind of slip off. And it, it does give that sort of sense of realism, other than, rather than when you uh, go to rack a TM, which you know, you can do with your little finger. This actually provides a bit of resistance and it's actually a bit of a challenge. You do have to rack it properly. Speaking of racking it, uh, another first impression is when I went to pull the trigger, nothing happened. I have repaired this issue since, um, which is now why the double action works. But an example of what would happen is if I just move the hammer like this, when I pulled it out of the box, if you ignore that, the hammer would just, sorry, the trigger would just pull and nothing would happen. Some people seem to comment on forums and say this is realistic because unless you cock a gun, nothing will happen. But that's not true of something like this. If you pull the trigger, the hammer will move. That's how it should be. But out of the box, it didn't do that. The linkage is just slightly out of tolerance and until the gun is cocked, that linkage just wasn't there. It's not really a big issue because that's what you're going to do anyway. You're going to put your magazine in, cock it, and then decock it, and from that point it's absolutely fine, it will shoot. But um, it, mine required a little bit of filing just to get the linkage to um, connect properly. I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself, it's very easy to um, over file and ruin that linkage. 
but it's just a point if you're into absolute realism uh, yeah when it's in its uncocked state and you pull the trigger nothing will happen it'll the hammer will just move loosely uh, which brings in another slight negative is that there's a very weak hammer, um, trigger spring in there it doesn't feel so bad now because I've lubed it up quite a lot inside but originally it did kind of struggle to reset it's just not quite as potent that spring as it should be but uh, really I'd say those are the main negative features um, other than that I'm very happy overall quality of the casting is excellent it's even got some marks that indicate it had a little bit of milling done to it so as if it's been cast and then some of the details have been milled into it not sure if that is what they've actually done or not as you can see and as you can probably tell by my constant wiping of it it does pick up marks quite easily especially the slide the slide has a different finish as you can see here the slide has got a different coating that seems to pick up marks a lot more easily than the frame but um, that's just what you have to expect when you have a nickel-plated gun like this, or whatever coating they actually use. If we have a look at uh, some of the closer details, um, it's, it's a really nicely built gun, as I've said, with some very nice little details. Something that you don't get a lot with this kind of gun, or even, you know, TMs, even higher-end stuff, is that the front sight is a separate piece. It's actually got a little sort of dovetail there, and it's got a white dot on the front, which I always like. The rear sight is also a separate piece. So no moulded in sights, which always annoys me. Even on the um, the Western Arms here, that is a moulded in piece rather than removable. But uh, the WE is removable. You've got that little half dot on the back. Not my favourite sight setup, but a lot of people like these because they are quite quick. As you can see there. Good sight picture. Black sights that um, provide contrast with the silver gun make aiming quite nice. Yeah, excellent detailing. Something that the WA version of this doesn't feature is, of course, those sights which are removable. This has actually got a separate extractor piece, which is something I love that um, WE have started doing. Separate extractor, looks really good. Plus, a firing pin. Most WEs have got these nowadays, even though they're, the guns that they're copying don't, is a sprung firing pin, which just looks excellent. You know, when holding a gun like this, looking down, there is nothing that distinguishes this from the real steel. You've got your firing pin, your sights, it, it just looks excellent. And um, it, it feels a bit weird to say, but for a WE, this is a, just an excellent replica. Right, speaking of the WA, which I think I mentioned this is loosely based on, you might have remembered one of my old videos, which is of the WA. I did really like it as a little gun. This has definitely taken its um, spotlight though. Oh, there's sun coming out a little bit there, sorry if there's a bit of glare. It's quite hard to film these silver pistols with all the um, glare you get on them. This is this follows a tradition that we have been doing recently of taking an existing design and uh, just improving it, adding little bits. So like I said it, it is WA based uh, but you've got that firing pin, you've got lots of redesigned internals. You've got a larger blowback nozzle for snappier kick. You've got a proper adjustable hop-up instead of the WA's little hex screw. Uh, lots of improvements, really, um, that, for me, make this a superior gun. And it, it does feel weird to say that sometimes, at WE kind of make a better pistol, but uh, uh, towards the end of my ownership with that WA, the slide started to crack. And while I'm not saying that cheap metal is the way to go over plastic. Normally the opposite is true. In, in the case of this, I find, I've found this to be a more durable pistol, a better looking pistol, a better shooting pistol. That It, it kind of makes the Western Arms version obsolete, sadly. I mean, as much as I love WA, um, yeah, I don't see any reason why you'd search for one second hand when you can buy an excellent gun like this new, which has that added weight, that added um, cold feel from all the metal. Yeah, very good. So I've had a look at the slide, we've got all those markings. Like I said, the outer barrel, which is of course metal, has got that lovely sort of turned uh, machine finish to it. And it is threaded at the end, so you can buy your little suppressor adapter, very cheap. Um, much easier than having to buy a whole threaded outer barrel. Hopefully the sun's going to die down a bit and I'll be able to put my camera back up. But um, at the moment I'm just kind of shielding the gun from the sun. So most of the detailing is uh, silver, like the takedown lever. I don't know why I said lever. Takedown lever. 
turning American. And of course the safety, which doubles as a decocker, which is which I really like. I quite like the safety design. It is ambidextrous, as is the magazine catch. Well, the magazine catch is reversible, let's say, not ambidextrous. You can swap it by removing the grip panels. So um, the battery of arms with this pistol is it can either be used single action, although the normal procedure would be to load it, cock it, decock it, and from here you could either carry it with the safety on, or like I would do, keep it like this. As you'll note, the hammer is in half cock, decocking it does take it to half cock. If you want to take it down to the fully uncocked position, you can simply pull back on the hammer, it'll disconnect, it should. There, it just lowers a little bit. It still won't hit the um, magazine, it won't shoot, and it is safe, you can't press that. But it just lowers it a little bit, makes the trigger pull a little bit more consistent. I don't really like half cock, because you get half a dead trigger pull. See, no, nothing there, and then it'll suddenly take up. So my, my routine is to decock, lower that hammer, um, it's safe to carry like this, and then you've got that long trigger pull. Trigger's alright, it's a little bit devoid of feel, you don't really get a clear break point, you get a slight feel for it, but it's certainly not as good as um, some of the guns I've tested, like the KSC SIG uh, P232, which has an excellent crisp trigger pull, but it's not bad at all. I'd say it's comparable to the Marui PX4, just enough feel to, um, it's actually a little bit better feeling than this, this is a little bit spongy. So yeah, not bad overall. We've got our slide stop, which is only on one side of the frame, as per most Berettas, uh, probably all Berettas. Everything works as it should. Now, like I said, some shops were trying to sell this with the false knowledge that it would take uh, full-size Beretta 92 magazines. But if I grab one of those here, I appreciate this isn't um, a full-size Beretta, it is a slightly smaller Beretta, but it still takes the same size magazine. You can see that a double-stack 9mm magazine is simply never going to fit inside a double-stack 380. They're just they're just totally different sizes, you know, it would stick out that much anyway. And if I show you the original magazine, you can see that size difference. It is similar thickness because they're both 9mm, but they, they just don't fit. 9mm, the uh, 9x19 is longer, there, there is no way this would ever fit. Which brings me on to the overall size of the gun, for anyone wondering. I've got smallish hands, but as you can see, um, it is a small pistol, it's not the smallest pistol, it's not it's not an absolute tiny subcompact like you, you know a lot of companies um, in the real steel make nowadays. But um, for the amount of firepower that you get, and the real steel is a 13 plus 1 with a Beretta 84, uh, it is a fair amount smaller than your standard Beretta 92. Like I said, it is scaled down. If we compare the slides here, it's not just shortened, it is, if it's thinner, it's shorter. It's quite a fat little pistol. Like I said, it's it's got a double stack 9mm uh, 380 magazine. So it is uh, substantially thick. If we have a look compared to the PX4, which is a kind of full size slash bordering compact gun. It is thicker than a polymer pistol. So if you've got really tiny hands, you might find it a little uncomfortable. But um, for anyone used to a normal Beretta 92, uh, this is a... Uh, about the same size in the grip, and it's much slimmer everywhere else. Especially the frame, which is very thin. Going back to that magazine, again we've got some nice crisp markings, these are WE original markings rather than ones that have been added. Unlike the Western Arms magazine, this is a little bit different, it's got um, a slightly different design with the base plate, which is removable, which is always good. Uh, very nice crisp casting, the, the edges are nearly sharp, um, you know, it's not, it's not, so it's very comparable to a TM magazine. You know, once upon a time, WE, uh, their castings were very sloppy. You could see casting marks and they were generally quite rounded and rough. But no, these are, these are well made. Got the same nickel sort of coating on it. Unlike the WA, these hold about 15 rounds, which isn't a huge amount, of course, but, um, for most purposes, that's all right. And they're quite cheap to buy. I think the Western Arms held about 21 or 22, so it's interesting that they've reduced the capacity, but they feel like a substantial product, and again, not too expensive. 
got some more markings there on the frame. The uh, takedown button here is quite a bright sort of chrome rather than the same satin as the rest. But um show you disassembly quickly here. So you push the button on this side, very much like a Breath 92. Push it down and slide comes off. No need to pull the trigger or <clears throat> touch the hammer. Uh, Western Arms design um, has clearly influenced this. It is a kind of half clone. A lot of it's similar, but there are some differences. Mainly in that firing mechanism, because the valve system is different. <clears throat> it does use a different mechanism. It's Yeah, it's kind of a half clone, uh, which W have done with a few guns, like the Tokarev and the upcoming P-38, which looks like it's going to be a half Maruzan kind of clone. All very well cast. A couple of black details, like the um, trigger bar there. Yeah, overall very well made. Quite light. Um, I believe the gun weighs about 600 grams overall, so a little bit heavier than the Western Arms. But um, if a gun like this was incredibly heavy, it wouldn't really feel right, to be honest. It, it works nicely as a little backup gun. Now, the most um, considerable changes have taken place inside the slide. You've got a much larger nozzle and piston assembly. Uh, you've got a again a, a much much more substantial blowback unit with these big black um, slide rail sections being actually screwed into the slide the western arms were just forced in and they click into the plastic this is actually all bolted in there uh, lots of reinforcement very thick i can't imagine this cracking now i i do actually need to make a follow-up video on my tokarev because unfortunately i've had quite a few problems with it the slide actually started to crack in a few areas however that's because the design is very thin. I can't see the same thing happening with this. this. This seems a very thick, sturdy design. Recoil spring, like I mentioned earlier, is very strong, actually. It's not a double recoil spring or anything. It's just a very strong single spring. And we've got our barrel, which has got a pretty good and effective hop-up unit mated to it. Unlike the Western Arms, which you insert an Allen key and screw it up, this just has that normal uh, TM-style dial. And you can see all the detailing on the barrel, really good looking. And there are our threads for our adapter here. Overall, very good design. Haven't had any issues with this so far. Seems very well made for a WE. Of course, all these, um, all these good features I'm saying are, of course, going to be replicated in the cheaper standard WE version. So. Don't think that you don't feel like you have to buy uh, this expensive trademark gun. I'm sure the standard WE um, is just as robust, of course. But um, if you want the trademarks, then uh, this is the way to go. Moving on to performance, that very snappy, crisp. Hmm, not locking back. Yeah, locking back doesn't always work quite as well as you'd expect. Just sometimes when you're dry, sort of racking it, it doesn't catch. But uh, not not too much of an issue. Uh, yeah, about performance. Very snappy recoil spring to the point where I was actually a bit scared to sort of shoot this. I shot it a couple of times and it, it really is very snappy. I was quite scared it was going to snap somewhere. Probably because of my persistent use of this, my guard of power up gas. I, I just like getting the most power out of my guns uh, as long as they can take it. So yes, I've been using this. Very powerful stuff. Possibly a little bit too powerful for this gun. If you have a good um, good access to propane or regular green gas, I would say go for that. The extra power this gives probably isn't worth it in such a tiny pistol, but um, it's just what I have on hand. I've got quite a lot of bottles of that. So uh, let's give a little demonstration here. First of all, single action. Note that you don't need to rack it to actually set the internals. You can just cock the hammer and shoot. Now, I'm not sure if you can see my arm move there. But again, this gun is incredibly snappy. It, I, I probably say that on just about every pistol I review. But um, this has got to beat most of the ones I've, I've been shooting. Compared to that, you go back and shoot something like this PX4, you know, a standard TM with Abbey Ultra gas. It, it's all right, but this feels really violent to shoot. FPS seems pretty decent for its size. With my powerful gas, it's been it's been 
pretty much on par with the TM. So considering the short barrel, that's pretty good. I'd ex you'd expect to get around 270 to 300 FPS with uh, green gas. Yeah, very snappy. Performance-wise, I couldn't be happier, really. It might not have the long-range kind of precision that you'd get with a TM pistol, but at uh, average pistol ranges, it is perfectly adequate. You've got a much better hop unit in here than with the Western Arms. And compared to other WEs, like the Tokarev, I think this actually shoots better. Very happy with this, although, of course, you'll want to buy some more magazines as they only hold about 15 rounds. Do a few more shots here. Double action. Quite a stiff slide uh, catch there, just because that recoil spring is so tough. I bought this um, just after I'd been shooting in the States, and um, it did surprise me how real this actually felt. Very stiff, crisp feeling, compared to a TM, which actually in comparison can feel a little bit sort of weak and sloppy. Which again is a weird thing to say. I do feel bad, um, a little bit guilty, saying all these good things about a WE, but I genuinely do like this gun very much. And for the price, yeah, it's a little bit expensive, it's about the same as a TM pistol. But um, I absolutely do recommend it, excellent. Only issues I've kind of come across, and it might be down to my gas I've been using, is after about 15 rounds, so after you've expended that capacity, it tends to start weak, uh, weak shots start coming through and it starts to not cycle properly. I'll see if I can get it to that stage now, fire a few more shots. Been quite good today actually, got quite a few shots off. No, it looks right actually. But um, occasionally what's been happening is it's been starting to do these light cycles and this sort of full auto buzzing as it starts to run out of gas. Uh, it's not a particularly efficient gun. Again, it could be down to me using this very powerful gas which tends to have a lot of power output but not a whole lot of shots through. So realistically, Unlike a TM where you might be able to get two or three magazines out of one fill, you're really looking at about the 15 shots and then you're going to be refilling BBs and gas. Not a big issue. I think for a little backup gun like this, that's perfectly adequate. But I uh, don't expect it to give you great efficiency. I think that just about concludes this. I'll hopefully have more videos on the way soon. But um, this one was particularly interesting to me. Again, just because it was a WE, but gives you the trademarks and the feel and the quality of a premium gun. Perfectly adequate performance. I really can't fault it. I'll of course make up an update video if anything does go wrong, but so far, uh, one of my very favorites. And I sell, I buy and sell a lot of pistols. I don't see any reason why I'd want to sell this in the near future. Very happy. Thanks for watching, more videos on the way.